Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we don't just focus on building, but we focus on building with efficiency. In a previous video, we went over how to build one of these tunnel boring machines. It looks kind of interesting, almost like a sci-fi movie type of rover. Well, today we're going to try to use this to not only dig a tunnel, but to build it at the same time. I've set up a few options here where we could remote operate it if we wanted to, since this thing pretty much stays in a straight line when it's running. And we're going to incorporate a projector, which is going to allow us to continuously weld and build the tunnel as we move along. This is a fairly basic concept. I've added a welder to each side of the front of the head and two that point downwards so it'll build the track below us as we're moving. There you can see the projector faced right on the corner. Now this projector, I typically put it on the side and I built a platform blueprint that is approximately 10 blocks long and five blocks wide and two blocks tall. Now you can adjust this any way you want. All you have to do is create a blueprint, then add the blueprint and double click if I double click it gives me this error which is not a big deal I just go back to the grid because while we're remote operating this go back to its terminal the projector and you can see it way off in the distance so we're gonna have to adjust this it's kind of that great area you might see it move around bob around and there you have it now you can see it so you have different options in case your projector is facing a different direction or you took a snapshot of the uh, wall that you want to build in the wrong direction, you can change it with a pitch, yaw, and roll. Now it might not be a standard adjustment for every build, so you kind of want to get familiar with how they work. They typically rotate either negative 90, negative 180, or positive 90, positive 180. Then you can use your vertical offset, and I'm gonna set this to be level with our current platform. That way, our tunnel boring machine doesn't have to climb a mountain or anything to get to it. Now, the way this head is spaced on this tunnel boring machine is almost exact to the spacing of using three blocks wide, and then you have the two block tall walls. If you do more than this, your welders might not actually engage to start welding the walls. If you do less than this, it definitely won't fit. You may not get your tunnel machine back out. I have sped up a certain portion of this video just to show you more of a time lapse, but in reality, it does take quite a while just crawling by itself. The benefit is, though, you don't really have to babysit it. Now we're just slowly creating this tunnel. And I did have to do modifications to this after all, but I'll show you after this. This is just a quick demonstration of showing you how it's going to create the walls and the bottom as we continuously progress. Some of the modifications I had to do was to lower the four lower drills down some. I mistakenly built it one small block off from what it should have been. And then I had to readjust the pistons to 0.6 to 0.7 extended. That way it gets rid of all the rubbish on the bottom. As I'm going across here, you can kind of see it building up and my wheels are having a hard time getting over it or kind of wobbling back and forth and forcing me sideways. If you're cutting through uneven rock, you can kind of expect this a little bit, but it shouldn't be that much. You can see on the drive wheels, they're not really catching or pushing us forward as much as they should be. Once the modifications are installed, I'll show you the difference 
and you'll see what I mean with how smooth this thing will operate after it's been adjusted. The purpose of this portion is to show you that if it's not correctly adjusted, it will mess up and not create a smooth tunnel. But there is hope. We can fix this. I don't think I'm going to go much farther on this. Maybe we'll just back it out and then modify it. Just trying to get to the end of this 10 block wall if we can. You can see it's sliding down one side or the other because of the uneven cuts from the drills. And I think that's close to the end of the wall there. I think I'm just going to back this out. We'll do some modifications and then see if we can clean it. So if you watch, I have lowered the drills, like I said, by one small block. They were a little bit high, so I added a conveyor block between my piston and the original conveyor block. And then I readjusted the height of the pistons down to 0.6 to 0.7. Now as we go through here, you can see it's picking up all the stone. So there's nothing in this tunnel at all as you're building it, except for maybe a very slight amount along the sides. As you can see, the rover is also not moving side to side. It's not having a big tendency to slide one side or the other. And to control this, all I'm having to do is lock or unlock my rotors. And so one side will catch up or slow down. As we move into this tunnel, we might be want to be able to see our way through. In reality, this might be about a two minute segment of going through this tunnel and clearing it out, but it's actually going to take you about 10 to 12 minutes. I changed the speed of this time lapse by three times. So every three minutes is about nine minutes. It was about three and a half minutes long. So it was around 10 or 11 minutes total to create this section. Now here I'm going to well, first I gotta move it slightly back. I forgot these welders are just gonna continuously weld this projector line. But I wanna put a projector here so we can extend this tunnel farther and I'll show you how efficient it is to continuously go on. Well, I can't really see it. Maybe I need to turn off this other projector altogether. That should do it. Now this projector we're going to put in here, it's going to have the same setup as the first one. But as you notice on the projector, there's different lines. See these double lines? We want that in front, and the quad line should be on top. Okay, now all we have to do is set the lines and we continue on. I didn't show you that portion because basically it's the same as using the original. First, we got to set this projection portion so we can continue on with our tunnel. This may be a little bit difficult, so you might want a remote access to be able to see. And we line it up to the very end of the first tunnel segment 
so our machine will continuously weld and drill in that line. The hazy parts are your projection. Depending on the type of material you're using, I'm using corrugated, it might be easier or harder to see because the projector flickers a bit. Now I'd say you could make a longer tunnel run, but I tried to do a 20 lock one and it kind of fell apart because I don't have a nice flat surface to build it on in order to take the blueprint. If you were, say, on a lake of ice, it might make it a lot easier because a lake of ice is essentially completely flat. So as you add blocks, it doesn't sink into the ground or tip or distract where you can't add more to it. When I built the 20 block long tunnel for the blueprint, by the time I got to the last block, it started tipping and suddenly blew up. I don't know if part of it was stuck underground and the coding of the game just couldn't handle it. As you notice, it's pretty smooth. We're just going right through the tunnel again. I'm going to do 10 blocks. And the first time I did this, I realized, man, it is so annoying. Unless you want your roof or your ceiling to be a stone, you need to clear out that stone. So later on, I'm going to add a few more drills that will fit in this tunnel as well, so we can clear that out as we're going. That means we'll have four drills on the bottom and four drills on the top. There we go. As you can see, they fit perfectly between these walls. Of course, after you add the drills, you'll have to update your controls. I have them set for my number five button on the G screen. And you have to go to the terminal and regroup them. Because otherwise, when you hit that button, if you didn't add the other drills into that grouping, they're not going to turn on. And here we go. We're, all we're doing now is clearing the ceiling. This will enable us to put a regular ceiling to this tunnel. If you wanted to, you could potentially just make your blueprint with a ceiling, but I didn't do that because there's no way you can really fit welders on the top of this unless you put them in the back area, which it is plausible to put them, say, behind the cockpit and have them pointing upward because it is tall enough. And you can see it's nice and smooth as we're going through here. And you can basically bore through an entire tunnel without having to worry about coming off track. In fact, a few times I got out of the cockpit and just let it go by itself. It uses very minimum adjustments in order to stay straight. Very minimum. I think altogether I was able to do about seven or eight blocks continuously without having to adjust the steering. It just depends on the consistency of the stone you're drilling through. If you have an offset of stone and it's thicker on one side compared to the other, or the context of it is different, it'll throw you off a little bit just because of the density. As you can see, I have the additional block on top of the pistons that allowed my drills to set lower. These are all the welders. You have the two in the front pointing downward. I used the conveyor converters on top of them and kind of got rid of some of the extra conveyors that we didn't need. But the conveyor converters are only one block tall, three blocks wide, and three blocks long which makes it kind of a perfect fit behind these pistons. And it's just the right height. There are no pistons that move the welders up and down. They just seem to work. And on the side ones, it's the same way. I put, as you can see kind of there, I put two of the conveyor converter blocks, the thin ones, and put a welder on each side. I know you can use a conveyor block, a larger one, 
but when I did that, the game did not like it and this thing went crazy. I ended up rebuilding the tunnel boring machine altogether and starting over. Also, to note, don't set the share inertia on your pistons or your rotors when you build this. If you do, again, the game will freak out for some reason and you will go spinning in one direction or another. My tunnel boring machine ended up doing backflips until it destroyed itself. Until I figured out if I keep these inertia sharing options off, it won't do that anymore. And there you have it. For the most part, that is the beginning of your tunnel. It's up to you as you're digging through this mountain on how far or how tall you want your tunnel. You could always make domes inside if you wanted to. This is actually a big location, so it may take a while for me to get this done. Well, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you leave your tips, tricks, and your own strategies for digging tunnels in the comments section. I appreciate it.